Canada, the world's second largest country, is an absolutely gigantic place. Laterally, it spans 5,514 kilometers in width, 1,200 kilometers more than the nation's boisterous southern neighbor. To complement this size, Canada is home to the seventh largest road network in the world, with a total size of 1,042,300 kilometers. Unsurprisingly, the majority of this network is concentrated within the south of the country, as 90% of Canadians live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. On Canadian roads, you will almost exclusively see standard cab trucks with their iconic protruding noses, a majority of which come from U.S. brands. This style of truck is known for its North American prevalence, and the aspects which make them popular here are invaluable to the country's 324,000 truck drivers. Firstly, owed partially to Canada's large size, hauls in this country can be long and unforgiving. While sticking to the populated southern border can provide a trucker with much-needed amenities, some of the more northern regions of Canada require freight too and are willing to pay quite a bit for its transport. The most northern region accessible by road, omitting ice roads, is the small settlement of Tukto Yaktuk in the Northwest Territories, a destination that would take 46 hours and a small ferry ride to reach from the city of Vancouver. Because of drives this length, Canadian truck drivers are more than thankful for their larger cabs, which function like a tiny apartment, complete with bed, microwave, fridge, television, and any other amenities a trucker can cram in. To compare this lifestyle to European truckers, for example, I've seen the quote, North American trucking is a lifestyle, European trucking is a job. Truck stops are also big in Canada, both physically and culturally, but really only in the south, where they can be found along some stretches of highway. Like the US, these are places for truckers to spend the night, assuming they can find a spot, that is. Outside of the more populated areas, highways themselves are actually quite rare, and a lot of trucking is done on simple two-lane roads, especially in the west and the north. A significant proportion of Canadian truck driving is international as well, with 70% of all freight either coming from or headed into the United States. Each Canadian province and territory has slightly different rules when it comes to weight limits, length requirements, and allowed combinations. But generally, the average Canadian semi-truck will be 22 to 23 meters long, usually a 16.2 meter trailer and a 6.2 meter tractor. In the province of Ontario, all trucks produced after 1995 have been outfitted with a speed limiter at 105 km per hour, and even those which originate from other provinces must comply with this ruling if they wish to drive on Ontario's roads. As such, truck speed limiters are quite common across the country, and with a maximum national speed limit of 110 km an hour for trucks, they don't seem to get in the way much, especially considering that many provinces have set lower speed limits anyway. Canadian driving time rules are fairly similar to that of the US, which means they're needlessly complicated, but I'll link a video explaining them in the comments so I don't have to. Generally, a Canadian truck driver will spend anywhere from 11 to 13 hours a day driving, but this varies based on specific circumstances. I would be amiss if I didn't mention one of the more dangerous aspects of Canadian trucking, the weather. As we all know, Canada can get quite cold and snowy no matter where you are in the country, meaning that drivers must be experienced in dealing with ice, snow, sleet, or any other terrifying weather condition which they may run into on the road. Canadian trucking has been in the news sporadically over the course of the last few years, mostly due to the truckers' protests, also known as the Freedom Convoy, which captured international attention during the pandemic. Originating over COVID vaccine mandates, which prevented international border crossings, truckers across the country headed to Ottawa, Canada's capital city. For weeks, truckers blocked main roads and honked over and over as a sign of solidarity with other truck drivers. While such a protest, and its various international offshoots, is now dead, the effects can still be felt in some small ways today, as the world slowly realizes how reliant it is on those who drive trucks. Thanks for watching. I purposely didn't mention Canada's ice roads here so I can save the topic for another video, but please leave a comment for what topic you'd like to see next. Thanks again and goodbye.